Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanter channel. So I've recently come back from a trip to Norway and uh, while I was there, I was introduced, um, or I got an introduction to uh, the person that has the largest um, Norwegian glass collection, private I should say, glass collection um, in Norway. So um, yeah, they said I could come around and have a look and when I was there, they said I could film, so that's what I did. Um, most of the collection is in boxes, but what he's got, he's got it laid out very nicely. You can see as you look around the room that he's actually labeled pattern types, um, or pattern names, I should say, um, against the glasses. And uh, yeah, so I was able to work my way around the shelves and highlight some various things and um, go talk in the background. Um, yeah, and... Uh, there was lots of chat off camera. I learned a lot from him. It was a really good, re uh, it was great. So I can't say more than that. And um, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I've, I've got sort of like different sections of film and um, between some of them, I'm going to interject some other bits. So I was looking at things and talking about what was in books and also different patterns. And I'll show a few of those just so that you can see what I'm talking about when I say, oh, it's like this, or well, it's like that, or whatever. So, um, yeah, I don't have them all in here. Some of them are down the shed, and it's, it's the evening, so I'm not going to be shooting down there to, to pick things out. But, yeah, what I've got here, I'll, I'll just show you um, when I talk about it's like this. Yeah, I'll, I'll pluck a few of those out so you'll see what I mean. Um, but yeah, it was really good, really good meeting. Um, I learned a lot, and, yeah, the worrying part is how close to uh, a lot of English glass and a lot of the Norwegian glasses. Um, I suspect if you went through all the catalogues in Europe you're going to find masses that there's a crossover so yeah it, yeah it's it's probably um, this was more surprising than the visit to the antique centre that's there is another film of um, and that's where I got my introduction to Ergo from so yeah it was it was really good so um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. I'm here in Norway looking at somebody's um, private collection of glass. There is a lot of it. Um, it's nearly all Norwegian. Um, this is about, I've been told it's about 30 or 40% of the different types of glass made in Norway. Most of it that I've seen so far is made by Hadland. And... Um, Yes, there's, there's some really interesting things in here. And I will go through and um, point out some of the interesting parts that are in here and how some of them relate to or look like English glass or other continental glass. So these are interesting here. These are champagne flutes. These are similar to the ones that we see in England from the 1820s and 30s. Um, these are dated a little bit later than that, and they would have been out of fashion um, in England by then. And um, as you can see, a lot of these designs are what you see in England. This kind of thing, you see these kind of things in England. And um, yeah, these look, we would normally say that these would be um, these hot glasses here. We would normally say these were bohemian, but clearly these are from Norway. And uh, yeah, we see a lot of these kind of glasses. Don't cover the name. Nope. And also, they've helpfully put all the pattern names down here, by the way. So this is better than I do <laughs> with my collection that you can see in the background in my films usually. And uh, yeah, there's some very nice things here. This is interesting. So. This is 1930s, but these are the kinds of patterns that you see on Georgian glasses. This cut, this um, engraved pattern here, and also you see these etched patterns in England as well, usually in the 1930s. And uh, yeah, this one's 1916 to 1930, so that's a similar kind of age. Some decanters up here. These look very Scandinavian. 
Um, there's no pattern name there. This is interesting. This is very like um, French bottles I've seen, but this is definitely um, Scandinavian. This looks like an early shape that we would get in England, but I think it's later. And um, yeah, this is a bit like a John Walsh Rolf pattern I've seen. It's not exactly the same as it, but similar. I was looking for something completely different. Um, and I did find something in this book, English and Irish Cut Glass by E.M. Elville. And some of the um, champagne flutes I was pointing out earlier. Here it is. English. There you go. Just the same virtue. I think this has got a wider bezel around the neck, around the base of the bowl, but yeah, they, they come, they vary in size, those. So, yeah, very, very like with the cut here, very like the ones um, we were looking at um, on the shelf there. And this is by Magic. I was looking for something else again, and I found this in my collection. Um, it's, um, this is an early 19th century one. It's got it's got a polish pantle actually, and probably the main difference of mine is it's got a slightly inverted lip. But yeah, this is got a nice ring, so slightly wonky um, knob there. But yeah, so very similar to the glasses we were looking at. So here we are, there's a couple of um, early 19th century ones. This one I would definitely say was continental. This one, previously, because it's got this step in the shoulder, I might have highlighted it as, oh, so this is not Norwegian. No, it's uh, Danish. Danish, okay. So previously I might have said this was French, but apparently this is Danish. So yeah, that's interesting. And yeah, some of these look kind of like yes, what you see in England. Very old. Yeah. So, this is the kind of thing you'd see in England yeah, as well. I love that one. Yeah. Is this Dutch? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You, you look at the, the engravings. Yeah. But it's not certain. Oh, it's, it's got certain. the it's got the windmill yes. on the other side. So normally people say these are Dutch. Yes, but it's the, they had it also in Dutch. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, these look like they might that might be orifice. I don't know. Not definite. Um, so is this one Danish as well here? Yes, everything with three rings. It's a uh, very well, good Swedish and uh, and Danish, but not Norwegian. Norwegian had only two. This is Norwegian, only two rings. So this is nice here. So this is orifice. I think this is in uh, Andy McConnell's The Decanter, Ancient Tomorrow. I will have a look and um, insert that into this video if I can find the picture of this and tell you what it is. Um, we see these in England as well. Um, oh. The girl was telling me this one here with the two rings. This, this is Norwegian. This is Norwegian. Yeah. So, so people might mistake these for B. Edwards of Belfast because still got the moulded base and the rings. Two rings like this, annulated rings. Can you see? So that's like B. Edwards of Belfast. When I do um, a video on Irish decanters, I will show you how that might be mistaken. Um, over here we have a whole bunch of, these will be 20th century champagne flutes. And you can see a lot more 20th century glass. These look nice. These look like something you'd normally associated with um, orifers from the 1920s, but it's a Hadland. You can see the patterns here. These are nice with the, the little flower pattern there. That's very nice. I've not seen that before. These are like you'd expect mistake these for English, these glasses. 
There's some, uh, this is local Masonic glass, this is a German one. You can see all of the different pattern names underneath for, for Hadland. And it's got some dates on some of these as well. This, this is like some of the early um, 18th century ones. It's a copy. I'm not sure yes. what period that's from. With the flammy form style molding on it. 19? 1960. Right. So it's more. But this one. Yeah, this one looks, um, looks bohemian. Uh, all right. <laughs> these look like um, these are local, but these look like Le Grasse, yes, it's, um, so they look French. Almost, almost um, similar to this, one, yeah. but in a different color. Oh, sorry. That's okay. These are nice as well. I really like these. I've seen some uh, Thomas Webb ones like this from a similar period. So that's. Interesting as well. These look like toddy glasses. So here we are again, back with the uh, my trusty Miller's 20th Century Glass uh, by Andy McConnell. And in the bit of film that we just saw, there was a decanter that I really quite liked, and I was kind of like. I was hovering over it thinking, I've seen that, I've seen that, I know I've seen it. I think it's Orifers. I did, afterwards, I did pull it down and have a look, and yay, it was Orifers, and it had Hald written underneath it as well, which is Edward Hald. Um, and here it is. It had a picture of, um, I'll just twist this page around a little bit so you can get a better view, because this is it kind of like against a black background. Um, yeah, it had a picture of Winston Churchill on it. Um, and it's dated 1945. Um, he's valuing it at a hundred pounds. And uh, yeah, if it had been for sale, um, as I was in Norway, and unlikely to ever see this again, I might have, I might have bought it for that, even if it's probably a bit pricey, but. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it a lot. So, yeah, it's gone. So, anyway, yeah, um, that's a nice decanter. It looked good in real life. So, in the piece of movie we just saw, I was talking about a decanter that had two rings. It had a moulded base like this one here. Two, two rings. Um, and I said, oh, it's like B. Edwards of Belfast. So this is actually a B. Edwards of Belfast decanter. It has this waffle stopper. This is actually quite a fancy one. I will do um, a film just on, probably just on B. Edwards of Belfast decanters because I have a few. Um, you can see the way the base is here. The, in the continental ones, the star is in the middle. And there's a bit of broken pond in the middle, but the star goes right to the middle. In the Irish ones, you've got this, these radiating lines that are around the perimeter, but then it's, there's like a clear patch and then the pontal. So that's the difference that you'll see. This is also lead glass, even if it is a bit thin. So to me only, this is interesting because I have a glass with a base like this yeah. that I never knew where it was yeah, from. 1820. So, yeah, it's, he's dating it for me here. And, um, and I'm going to have a closer look at mine and see how close it is to this. It looks very similar with this pressed base. Um, these are Norwegian as well. Um, normally I would say these were French. And also these look very English, but local. So, copying... I don't know if these were made in other places in Europe. Oh, that's nice, yes. With an etched pattern 
And it, is there a date on this? No. Oh, it's not land that. So this, this style of stem was something that you'd see in Victorian era in the UK. But some people were doing it later. But yeah, it's difficult to do so, mainly Victorian. Apparently this is the largest gluck gluck in Europe. So, um, and what's really nice about it, if I don't put my finger over the, st over the lens, is the stopper matches the body of the bottle. How fantastic is that? So the stopper is its own mini gluck gluck. And um, yeah, he's got some more here. And you can see this one's labeled Hadland. In the piece of film we were looking at, there was a glass I got quite excited about because I have this one. And if you look at how the base is made, it's, it's just the same. It's just the same with this pressed star base with the cut pontle in the middle. Um, yeah, so. I had no idea where this is from before. Um, mine is probably a nicer one that has nicer quality. It's got, got these cut panels, his didn't. Uh, the glass is less bubbly and less grey. So mine might be a bit newer or it might be from the same area. It might be that it's Swedish or from a different factory in Norway. Um, that was just slightly better quality but yeah that's really interesting so that tells me at the very least if this isn't Norwegian it's probably Scandinavian because I've never seen another one of these um, that was the I was kind of like I saw that and I went oh there it is so yeah that was quite exciting for me because I'm that kind of person so I have something really interesting here. This is the kind of stuff I normally only see in books. But these are real, real early 18th century glasses with this pattern on top. I will try and find something, some of this in some of the books that I have and highlight it in the film if I can pick it out. So I will show after this if I remember. And range of gluck gluck sizes. I think these are all Hadland um, and they have that same gluck gluck shaped stoppers as well to match. And then I'll go down a level. Yeah so these are just like common or garden English champagne flutes from the Victorian era that you'd see normally. This is super nice with this meander etched into it. Um, it looks early 19th century, I think they are. They're, these are early 19th century ones, aren't they? This one with the meander here. Oh, yes. And this 18, one. 1870, no, 1810. Yeah. yeah. So these are nice early with lemon squeezes. We call them uh, humpy glasses. This is a nice, super fine glass here as well. Why but is very diplomatic? Very easy. These are like the um, white frass rummers that you see, not with the things on those, it would be normally earlier. But again, these are all like very English glasses. They're something different. It's like a rummer with a milk glass base. And these look a bit orifice like, but no, they're Hadland. And these look like John Walsh Walsh with the scale cut bo uh, bowls. And um, the um, vine leaves engraved on them. Yeah, next down, go down the level. So these are super fantastic, super quality. Morning star cut bases, super fine. Yeah, I like these a lot. Uh, this is very interesting here. Um, I can't remember what this is called. Millefiori twist in the whole, through the whole 
body of the glass. If anybody knows where this is from, we would like to know some more early... Um, although I think these are copies, it's got a date on there, 1909-99. But they look like um, early drummers with lemon screen spaces, but they're later. And you work your way along. Again, they look like what you get in England, but they're all Norwegian patterns, and he's even named them, so there's no escaping that. I'm just filming the bottom row here. You can see some of these look fairly unique to here. Um, and then some of them look like what you'd see elsewhere. This is nice here. I like this pattern. Very interesting. This is like some orifice glass I've seen. These dishes in the back here, they look like Irish glass. So these are interesting, they look like um, some of the early 19th century glasses, but they're copies. These look like some, where is it there? Early 19th century glass as well. These look like Stuart Crystal Stratford. Oh, it's getting on in time. Okay. Tiny gluck looks here. I'm just going to keep going through that that bonging. <laughs> and here's a here's a champagne that's like the John Walsh Walsh ones. Magna. So these are real super 1960s 50s style. Quite cute. Right in the back here, hiding is the Salviati glass, and this is a Bohemian one here. Just that's a really good quality one. You've heard me mention John Walsh Walsh a couple of times. Um, this book is The Glass of John Walsh Walsh, 1850 to 1951 by Eric Reynolds. I think this is from 1999. This is the book. And the glasses I'm talking about are the ones with the um, scale bowls with the engraved um, vines around them. This is what they're like. There's a few different shapes, but they come in all short shapes and sizes, these bowls. Um, I think other people did them, but yeah, the main reference here is John Walsh Walsh. I, I suspect they probably did most of them because, yeah. Anyway, um, this is what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, this is a very good book. So this is very interesting um, for anybody that saw my other video on Scandinav on continental uh, soda glass decanters because there was uh, I was only able to show a book picture of a painted one because I don't have any painted ones myself and here is one in the flesh it is broken but the the painting is really crisp and nice so I hope you enjoyed that that video um yes so uh, I do have to let you know that they are downsizing their collection and quite a lot of it is for sale. So if anybody's interested in purchasing any of that glass, please get in touch with me and I will pass on their contact details. Um, so if you like this video and you would like to see more of this kind of content, I will be doing more. And um, yeah, so please like and subscribe.